think you can beat me in soybeans? Forget about it. We do have two tropical storms or hurricanes coming in the Gulf. They get a lot of wind, a lot of rain, so who knows what's going to happen. You know, I'm a sixth generation farmer. Can I keep expanding? What can I do? What am I not doing right? I'm confirmed sixth generation farmer. It's fresh, pretty thin right now. It's just that time of year. It's not going to be hard to beat Weaver. He's not even in my realm of thoughts. Like, pick out the worst plant. That should be how Weaver's crap looks. Hey guys, this is Matt Miles with Podfather. We got the team here today in McGee, Arkansas, Deche County, Southeast Arkansas. Look at some of our plots on the soybeans. We're trying to make the higher yields and some normal production too. Probably gonna go to the rice field. Look at our rice. We got some water to check there. We got a Revitech trial on the soybeans. So we're kind of loaded up on BASF products this year as normal. Right now, you know, we're not the harvest yet, but we think, you know, we're, we're making a difference. Today with us, we'll have Rob Dedman, who is uh, my independent crop consultant, to be my son, Lane. Uh, he's gonna be riding around with us today, too. Okay, guys, let's get this show on the road and go look at some crops. Call this, this farm the Finley Place. Highly productive field. We've cut 100 bushel plus beans in this a couple of different times. So we're, we're pretty impressed with, you know, with what we got. Uh, I haven't done the row counts on these. You can tell this is fully dented. We're fixing to check this to see if we're close to irrigation termination. We feel like we've got an average to above average corn crop based on what we're seeing right now. I mean, you know, if they're all like this, we got a really good corn crop. It's because we'll lay poly pipe down the end of this field, but we'll punch a hole in the poly pipe and that water will run to the end of the field, which is then connected to a, a drain it's a totally different situation than most of the guys, you know, in the Midwest or a lot of guys around that have the pivots and stuff. But we seem to do pretty good with it. It's a different beast. I like it because we can make 220 to 250 on our corn irrigated. And in our environment without irrigation, we're looking at 50 to 75 bushels. We can get kind of mimic that Midwest weather. Or we can really do good. I don't know if you know a lot about irrigation, but that's the hole that the irrigation comes out. I almost lost a bet with Rob on the major highway out there out the four lane when we first started this. I did lose a bet, but my first thing I told him was, if this worked the way he said it would work off the computer, I told him that if he would drop his britches on the four lane, that I would kiss his butt. And you know, we were talking about that while we were in the office setting it up and we got out to the field. And, you know, I looked at the field and I thought, you know, I think I'm right. But what if I was wrong? You rolled that one roll out, and you said, this ain't going to work. And I said, just, just punch it. And so we marched down through there, marking it and punching it. And I'll head out. And the next morning, when you called me at 7 o'clock, you said, Rob. I said, Matt. You said, we got a problem up here. And that man, I had this sinking spell. I thought, oh, man, this thing's blowed out. I'm going to look like an idiot. And he said, we should have turned this off about 30 minutes before what I did. It's perfect. We ended up changing the bed to the biggest steak he could eat. And he, and it, all, needless to say, he got full at the end of the night. And I'm not good at many things, but irrigation is one I feel like I'm decent at. And that computer proved that it's a little better than I am. What are you doing? I'm cleaning up. This is kind of a daily routine. You know, we come out here and and are changing our sets, we're starting our water. We've got to get it set up on the on the actual line that we want it to go on. So right now we're going down our, our our supply line, our dummy line, whatever we want to call it. And so we're going to swap it from that one to this one right here by the well. 
So we put all of our lines on short pipes for, for convenience. If not, we would have to take one of these bands on and off every time. You know, we'd have the banner pipe on. So for convenience, this makes it a lot easier. And we're set up. You know, if we want to go down to our tee, if we want to go that way, we've got a rope tied on this side. If not, we swap our rope and go down that side. So now we're ready for we're ready for water. One of the better products that we've seen come out here lately is Veltima from BASF. The thing I like about this is how long it's going to last in that plant. It can give me a longer window to make that decision. I'm really loving it. Veltima has the longest residual of any product out there. Let's control something that we're able to control this year. Veltima reduces stress in the plant, reduces the temperature. Happy corn makes more grain. Good morning, welcome back to the farm. It's uh, early July and we're really busy as my phone is going off constantly. Always does early in the morning, but, and all day long as far as that goes. I'd forgotten about a field of uh, soybeans. It's about 125 acres. We need to put some uh, Revitec on it, some fungicide. We might mix a little extra stuff in there to hopefully help for that, one of those high yields we're always looking for. We're gonna need this later. Another 25 gallons of propanil and uh, five gallons of storm, two and a half gallons of crop oil. To finish this corn fungicide, side, we're gonna go back with the eight ounces of Veltima should work full season. We won't have to worry about southern rust like we always have to come back and treat at the tail end. For the most part, that'll that'll put the corn to bed. We're just we're three weeks away from uh, terminating irrigation on a lot of it, so hopefully we'll be harvesting corn mid-August. Cut. <laughs> Right now we're in this field of intercrop. It's a 130 acre field. Uh, about 45 acres is solid corn. 80, 85 acres is intercrop. So what we've done, we've got a 40 foot planter pass of soybeans and a 40 foot planter pass of corn. The planters we use allows us to change the population per row. So in the corn, 56,000 on the outside, working our way down to about 38,000 on the inner rows. Beans. They look really nice. They're waist high. The whole field, of course, has been fungicided with uh, BASF's Revitec. We're expecting season-long control. Corn looks good, it's pollinated. All the ears are about the same height on each plant. It's good or better than I expected. So we'll just see how the yield turns out. If we can fix six pods per node and get 21 nodes, that's well over 100 bushels. So, you know, there, there's a pod. It, it's, it's elongated, but uh, there's no bean in it yet. Give it 10 days and it'll start plumping up with some nice round heavy beans, hopefully. If you scour the internet and ask Google the question, uh, it's about 2.4 beans per pod. That's across the whole plant. In the past, uh, when I really do some counting, 2.65, 2.7 is about where I usually fall. The beans are storing right now, all of the sugars in the leaves. They'll take that and move that into the pods. So beans look extremely good right now. The fungicide that's out here actually will reduce the ethylene that's in the plant, which is extremely good. I know the fungicide people have talked about that for years. And when you reduce the ethylene in the plant, you retain more of the pods and the blooms that are out here. Uh, excess ethylene will cause abortion. And uh, 
It's one of the big benefits you get out of fungicide that you usually think about disease, but it gives more benefits than just disease. What are your thoughts on stunting the plants? Well, I mean, you know, if you stunt the plant intentionally, you should cause more branching. Look at all these little grasshoppers. I just, I told you, I, I've seen, look at here. I know, they're everywhere. They're everywhere. Well, now that we know they're out here, we'll keep an eye on them. Yeah. Just be out here. If, I mean, we, if we have to, we can treat them later and put some more. They ate pretty good right in here. Yeah. Y'all keep busy. I'm going to look for more issues. You don't want a, a, a big, tall plant that's just vegetative. You want reproduction. And when you start a plant, it will go into, now, into reproduction. Because the plant doesn't know you're going to come out here and, and harvest all of her babies. So a plant's mechanism is that it will produce more beans because it thinks it's under stress when you stun it. The definition of stunning is subjective. I mean, stunning to the point where they almost die or just burn the leaves a little bit so it may slow them down for a day or two. So when you ask you about someone stunning beans, you need to know what they're trying to achieve. I got together with them. We've got a pop-up blend and there's some special stuff in it and I made it specifically for this. With Monty's we have trusted advisors and we get that relationship. Working with Temple on this field of beans, we've got a very good root development. I mean, that's awesome looking. Monty's carbon, I wouldn't farm if I couldn't use that. All right, guys, we're in a one of our normal production fields right now. This field was planted April the 6th. It's at R6. So, you know, we're getting a little close to termination of our irrigation. We just watered them. The ground's moist right now. You know, we're, we're pretty excited with what we're getting. We're thinking, you know, that these beans are gonna be 80 to 90 bushel beans, probably somewhere in that range. Just a 19 node bean, and you can see in here they're pretty thick. So, you know, they're not spread out a whole lot, but you can see the pods on them there. Once we lay our irrigation pipe and we start having the water on about a seven day rotation, then we pretty much have to use a plane for any applications that we have simply because we keep the ground fairly wet. One extra three bean pod per plant can be up to 10 bushels an acre. So something we're real proud about is our nodulation and the root systems we have. This field traditionally is gonna be somewhere between 85 and 100 average. So if I was guessing this field today, I would probably be in the 90 range. Uh, this field here also had Revitec put on it at eight ounce rate from BASF. We did a trial with them last year. From the check, to the Revitec plot was 14 bushels. You're a person and you're healthy and you're a weightlifter and you know you eat the right foods and you take the right vitamins and you take a guy that's unhealthy. You know, the guy that's healthy is gonna have more stored energy than the guy that's not healthy and that's kind of the plants work the same way. fields. I went ahead while we're standing here on the end and pulled some of this barnyard grass just to kind of show y'all other than red rice which is an exact species almost a regular rice that and barnyard grass are probably our two most yield robbing weeds that we have. It'll take your rice over. It actually smothers the rice out and you'll have a field of barnyard grass so the best weed you can find is one that never came up. It's a pretty finicky crop but uh as you can tell by looking at my physique, it tastes pretty good and it'll put pounds on you. So what we're doing over here right now is we're looking down here in this canopy and we're checking for the disease. We're looking for sheath blight. And then also we're looking at the growth stage on this rice, which they're not mature right now, but uh, it'll give us an idea of where we are. So this rice is kind of set to go. The next thing will happen to this field is, is once it begins to 
the heads begin to extend, come out of that boot that I showed you, we'll start sweeping it for uh, the rice stink bug. And uh, so we're trying to protect the quality of the grain. And also, we have to watch for that pest. He can be, he can be pretty tough. But this rice looks like it's right on track to be really good. So pretty excited about it right now. Guys, this is where we're really hoping to become the pod father. We want to make history right here in this field. This is where we hope the cat's meow is. But our goal is to have a solid bean production yield across the whole thing. If we're, if we're raising 4,000 acres of beans, to get to where we've gotten has been because of these plots and, and taking some of the production practices that we've used in the plots and putting them in full production. We're hoping these beans here are gonna be north of 100 bushel because of what we got in them. Don't look at the top yield that I'm doing or Corey's doing or you know whoever. Look at the top yield for your, your farm. You can be a lot more successful than I am if you're growing a 70, 80 bushel bean on a 40 bushel piece of dirt. Everybody wants a magic potion for making high yield beans. The name of the game is relieving stress. You know, basically what we're looking at here is you know, the top of that bean, and we're filling that out pretty good. But what I want you to notice that I was talking about earlier is most of the time in the top of bean plants, you're gonna have a lot of one and two bean pods. And I just pulled this off with three nodes down, 12 pods, one four bean, and the rest of them are three beans. So we're kind of excited about what we're seeing. These beans still have some pods to make, and if you look at what Lane's got there, we're still freaking blooming. I think these beans are pretty outstanding. A little concerned about some of the disease we have in them. We're probably pretty close to making an application for the uh, green stink bugs right now. I think the pod load on them with the population is just outstanding. The main thing is keep enough energy in this plant to finish it out. We'll see. We're hoping if we do, happen to get lucky and become the pod father that it happens in this field right here. Revitech is a brand new product from BASF. We're really excited for that. Revitech is going to be able to help growers stretch yields more than they have in the past. The number one name of the game should be reducing stress. You reduce stress, you increase yield. I'm excited about Revitech. We use it on every acre. We're looking at upwards of 60 days control. It's going to take great farmers and just propel them so much further than we've ever been before. Jacob's landing, we'll get him in here and we'll talk about it. But no, I, I think the corn looks good. I mean, it's clean, there's no disease. The field's clean of weeds. Uh, the beans are getting, I'll call leggy, a little tall. It's too late to try to burn them back. Of course, it'd be hard to do that. That's a challenge. I mean, whatever you do to the corn, you have to do the beans, or whatever you do to the beans, you have to do the corn. Uh, I'm not set up to apply anything on 40 foot. Everything we do is on 120 feet or done by plane. It's just, it's just impossible to make separate applications. Just like riding a bicycle. You know, something I've done, and I'm kind of switching gears, I've seen a, a four to five bushel yield increase by going with the R5 fungicide shot. I stumbled across it accidentally and then proved it again to myself. And now the University of Arkansas, who was very conservative, has actually said that. And that's with fungicide only. Now, do I do every acre? No. 
probably because I can't afford it or don't feel like I can afford it. We can't spray dicamba up in the field. It's the next best thing. It's not bad, but it may kill 20% of something, but it's not gonna bother the neighbors either. Yeah, blue Connor grain bin. Remember you had to prime your boom up and all that. So when you get done, it'll be, uh, take about 370 gallons through the whole field. My name is Hans, and I'm from South Africa. I'm an ag operator at Mr. Galloway's uh, cotton farm, or Galloway Farms. And I've been here now for five months. Agriculture is my passion. I was a farmer in South Africa for 26 years. And due to a drought for seven years, I decided to come and look for, for some work to pay my bills and to seek new opportunities. Yes, today I'm spraying uh, some soya beans uh, for weed control like a glyphosate and um, I'm spraying some other chemicals for some weeds that are uh, not killing by glyphosate anymore. They're resistant and afterwards I will start spraying um, some fungicides. If you want to say farming in Afrikaans, you will go like boerderij. And if you would say like agriculture operator, you would say like a tractor driver. It's a little of a slang, but there's an operateur. It's an operator, the word for operator is operateur. So we stopped by this pivot out here. We've got probably out of 50, we probably got 40 running. Uh, this one was not running. Uh, so I want to stop by and see what was wrong with it. Fortunately, one of my farm managers had turned it off because over the winter, the beavers stopped this ditch up over here to the, to the west, and we had to remove some culverts at the pivot crosses to get into the other field. He didn't want it to get in the ditch while no one was watching it. So I'm going to turn it on and keep an eye on it for the next uh, three or four hours and turn it off before it gets to the ditch. So fortunately, uh, there's no problem out here. False alarm. That's not always the case. Usually it's some disaster, but uh, in this particular case, this one's pretty dependable. I'm just gonna go over here, push a few buttons, and start putting out some water. All right, here we go. All right, so the pivot is on and moving. And here in a few seconds, the whale's gonna come on. It's gonna get the dogs wet, and they're not gonna like that. How's this for you? Y'all wonder what my day consists of? It's doing crap like this all day long. One of the better products that we've seen come out here lately is Veltima from BASF. The thing I like about this is how long it's going to last in that plant. It can give me a longer window to make that decision. I'm really loving it. Veltima has the longest residual of any product out there. Let's control something that we're able to control this year. Veltima reduces stress in the plant, reduces the temperature. Happy corn makes more grain.